Hi everyone, my name is Ricardo Cepeda and I'm the manager of this facility. The University of Miami Zebrafish Facility was built in 2010 by Aquatic Habitat. There is a main aquarium room and six associate rooms, one for injection with three micro-injection stations. One room where we manually test the water parameters and prepare the, and store the fish food. This room also has a dishwasher for cleaning crossing tanks with hot water and bleach. The water that we use is arrow water is tailed by Cooligan. The pump room is uh, located beside to the preparation room where we have the charcoal, mechanical and UV filters for both system A and B. Also in this room we have the arrow water store reservoir tank which supplies water from system, the pH and the conductivity doser. One TGV system for both systems and one aqua manager software who send all the data for uh, the main computer. Finally, the facility also has a quarantine room with three standalone racks and at this moment only one is running with about 20 fish in quarantine. This is where we receive new lines from other labs or facilities. The facility has a storage independent storage room where we keep replacement and all facility components. 2,500 to 3,000 adult fish is the total for our colony. This allows us to keep ma uh, many genetically distinct lines of fish while tracking only a few independent water quality measurements. All the adult fish you see here were raised from babies so as to avoid introducing pat pathogens. Our lar larval culture protocol consists in to keep the embryos in a petri dish for one week. Then they are moved to a breeding tank in embryo media and kept for two weeks in an incubator fed with a larval AP 100, 150 microns. After this, the embryos are moved to the recirculating system with baby baffle for three months. Each batch of the fish that we raise get a UN number. Additionally, the facility has one sensor phone auto dialer which verifies all electric connection. Each system has it, its own water so that in case of disease, only one system is affected. The lighting system is a ceiling light with one red light for working at night or in emergency cases. The facility also has protocols such as SOP for European preparation, water shutdown and turn off, food preparation, system maintenance for lock, sick and dead embryos, white tight crossing lock, etc. The facility team consists in one director, the facility manager and two work study students. Also, graduate and undergraduate students help to keep the facility running in good conditions. Hello, my name is Hannah Hiraki and I am an undergraduate student working at the fish facility. The water chemistry is checked daily using two YSI monitors, and the values are written in a system maintenance log, along with the feeding times and the schedule for changing filters. The water chemistry values are 7.25 to 7.45 for pH, 25.5 Celsius to 28.5 Celsius for temperature, and 400 to 600 milliosmoles for conductivity. Most of the fish you see here are set up in mating tanks to produce embryos and larvae for experiments or classroom activities. To set up crosses, we have around 50 breeding tanks and we use this counter space in the main aquarium room. The feeding schedule is twice a day and once on the weekends. We feed them perici mix and brine shrimp. A brine shrimp hatchery is set up in the aquarium room. They are collected with a pipette and transferred from salt water to fresh water. So soon we are going to introduce rotifers as a new diet for the babies. All the used tanks, nets, and dividers are placed in a dishwasher to be cleaned with hot water and bleach. The water quality levels such as pH, alkalinity, ammonia, and nitrate are tested manually weekly with a hatch test kit and its values are recorded in the system maintenance log. My name is David James and I am a PhD candidate in Dr. Dahlman's lab. I use zebrafish to study a model of felon McDermott syndrome, which is a genetic form of autism. We use these fish because they are uh, highly transparent when they're young, and they're amenable to genomic editing techniques such as CRISPR-Cas9. We use them to study a GI-associated disorder with felon McDermott syndrome. I'm Dr. Julia Dahlman, and I'm the director of the College of Arts and Sciences Zebrafish Corps facility, where our goal is to provide the University of Miami and South Florida communities with zebrafish embryos, larvae, and adult zebrafish for both research and teaching. Many external users make use of the zebrafish facility for research, and you might wonder why zebrafish. A single zebrafish female produces hundreds of embryos that develop externally and are transparent, making early developmental stages accessible to study. The development of both organ systems and behavioral repertoires are fast and stereotyped, and gene knockdown and transgenic technologies inexpensive and rapid. 
These attributes have made zebrafish a popular choice for screens in cancer, physiology, regenerative medicine, neuro, and developmental biology. Several experimentally useful lines of fish are already hosted in the facility. For example, rainbow fish for cell lineage analysis, Cree fish for Cree locks recombination, and G camp fish for monitoring neuronal activity. And more can be acquired depending on the user's needs. The facility is under government oversight. We are ALAC approved, and all experiments require that the researcher write a protocol that is reviewed by the University of Miami Institutional Animal Care and Use Committee. I would help you write a protocol if you were interested in doing research with zebrafish. For questions regarding the use of zebrafish for your own research purposes, please contact me at 305-284-3954.